In the analog era, hooking up the equipment and routing signals through the mixer and processing chain was an integral part of studio work at all stages of production. An engineer or mixer wouldn't get very far without a thorough mastery of signal flow. The knowledge of how best to route audio through the mixer and the various stages of processing, many of which involved the hookup of external outboard gear, which had to be manually inserted into the signal chain with patch cables. And a key component of signal flow was proper gain staging, ensuring that as the signal entered and exited every processor, it was maintained at the optimal level, guaranteeing the proper response and the best sound quality from each piece of gear that contributed to the final mix. Nowadays, with most mixing being done primarily in the box, an engineer who's come up sitting in front of a DAW may not have that intimate knowledge and understanding of signal flow. Much signal routing in the virtual world is handled via pop-up menus and dialog boxes without the need for patch cables and actual physical hookups. So modern engineers may not have the ability to clearly visualize the actual signal flow through a DAW's virtual mixer and insert processors. And with the enhanced headroom of the modern DAW, a lot of people are unfamiliar with even the concept of gain staging, let alone the need for it, or the correct techniques for maintaining optimal levels throughout the signal chain. And yet, these aspects of production and mixing are just as important as they ever were when you had to physically hook up the whole audio studio before you could even think about starting a session. You'll still be dealing with signal flow and gain staging issues, even if the actual connections are invisible, hidden behind familiar computer graphics and selection conventions. When it comes to the constant routing and rerouting of signals that comes up at all stages of production, there are a number of ways engineers or mixers can slip up. So it's not surprising that they may make a few mistakes, specific choices or habits they might fall into that might not be the most effective ways to manage signal flow and level optimization. This series of courses, 10 mistakes or 10 don'ts of various production activities, focuses on some of those things, common and sometimes less common approaches and applications that it would probably be best to avoid. This course, of course, covers 10 things to watch out for when it comes to signal flow and gain staging. It presents a series of suggested don'ts, mistakes or just less effective practices, along with suggestions for alternative approaches that might provide better results when routing signals from one stage to the next, especially in the virtual world. The course assumes a basic familiarity with studio hookup, but just to be thorough, I'll do a very brief review of some background and basic concepts before jumping into the 10 don'ts themselves. In the analog heyday of the recording industry, the heart of any studio is its console. Ultimately, all signals at all stages of production were routed through it. During recording, the microphones provided the primary signals, and console routing options sent them to individual channels of the multi-track recorder, originally analog multi-track tape, and then, of course, digital DAW recorders. And this hasn't changed much even today, at least for larger live sessions. The traditional massive console may, in the case of smaller studios, have given way to more basic routing via the DAW interface, but the basic operation is the same. When it came time to mix, the mic signals running through the main mixer channels were replaced by the playback returns from the multitrack. And again, for mixes that are still done on a traditional analog console, this is also still handled the same way today, although, naturally, it's become more common to mix using the DAW's virtual console and effects inside the box. When recording and mixing was, or is, done at a traditional analog console, the initial hookup and rerouting of signals is accomplished via the patch bay. In a professional studio, all connections pass through the patch bay. In smaller setups, this could be as simple as a couple of rack mount patch bay units, but for larger facilities, with large format consoles and racks and racks of outboard processors, the patch bay is a big affair. And it's one of the first things that an engineer, either a novice or an experienced pro, coming into the room for the first time, has to get intimately familiar with. Every piece of gear in the room is connected through the patch bay, so a typical large session would end up with dozens of cables hanging out of the bay, handling all the connections for inserting whatever outboard gear was utilized in the mix. Of course, in a DAW, the equivalent hookup is handled much more simply by selecting different processors in the various channel strips insert slots. No muss, no fuss, but also no clear visual sense of how the signal flows from one effect to another. 
or the significance of how that flow could potentially affect the sound, for better or worse. And in the analog world, when the signal is routed through any processing, whether the console's onboard EQ and dynamics, or the outboard gear in the racks, if the level going in and out of each stage isn't correct, you'll know it, not just by the flashing red overload indicators, but by the noise and distortion that results from improper analog gain staging. But in the virtual domain, thanks to the extra headroom provided by all DAWs, you can get away with improper levels, or at least you may seem to be getting away with them, but in many cases the sound may be compromised in ways you don't even realize. And ironically, it's often the best sounding and the priciest plugins and effects that are most likely to deliver less than their best sound quality in these cases, even if there's no obvious noise or distortion to call your attention to it. I'll be covering all these issues and concerns as I look at the various potential mistakes and don'ts that are likely to come up when routing signals and hooking up equipment in the modern studio. So, with that brief rundown out of the way, let's start taking a look at some of those things to watch out for when it comes to signal flow and gain staging. <laughs> 